Hi, this is Dr. Bharat Dwaj. I am CEO and Chief Doctor at Fedika Somyapati. Today we will discuss on the topic of anal fissures. Anal fissures is one of the common diseases which we can see among males and females. It usually occurs between the age of 15 years and 40 years. It also occurs in other ages, but this is the most common age. The problem with this disease is, see, basically there are other diseases which are common around the anal region. They could be piles, they could be fissures, they could be they could be anal sinus, they could be anal abscess or some other diseases like anal fistula also or the common diseases around anal region. Normally what happens is people confuse with the other diseases. They don't go for diagnosis and they take own treatment or they go and search in the Google or they listen to some video and they start taking the treatment on their own. This causes the major issues. Instead of treating the disease, this causes the disease will increase and they land into more problems because of this phenomenon which they, they will be doing. One more problem with this disease is there will be pain during anal fissures. Once you start taking the treatment, pain will go off but the disease will remain as it is. Once the pain is gone, people think that the disease is cured and they take and, and they stop taking the treatment or they stop taking the precautions which are required for this disease. That's the reason this disease will again and again relapse and it will be continuing for a very long time and it leads into complication. The three things you have to do for when you have this disease is get the reaches immediately, get the diagnosis based on the exact disease, the treatment has to be taken. The next one is do not start your own treatment, don't look into Google or look into some videos and start your own treatment. Next one is take the treatment completely don't stop in the middle of the treatment and one more important thing is don't go to a fake doctor or go to a specialist and get this diagnosed and start the treatment this will give you the better results then what is anal fissure anal fissure is the tear in the anal region so there are three parts in the anal region upper part middle part and lower part in the middle and lower part there will be a tear in the mucosal layer mucosal layer is the inner layer of the anal region and you will have the tear there, there will be a split in that mucosal layer which causes pain and coming to the signs and symptoms pain is the hallmark of this disease what happens is uh, the pain starts while you you start going for the motion the pain continues even after the motion for the long time there can be streaks of blood these streaks of blood can be seen on the motion or when you wipe the anal region with the tissue paper you can see the drops of blood or streaks of blood on the tissue paper as well and also you can see the streaks of blood on the toilet this is also common basically this is the friction between the injury or the, the fissure and the motion you are passing and also there can be sometimes slight mucus discharge mucus means a, a sticky fluid will come out of your anus sometimes and also pruritis there will be severe itching around the anal region for some time and also this is seen mostly after you take a spicy diet spicy diet will irritate the lesion and you will have more pain if you take the spicy diet before the day you pass the stool so these are the common signs and symptoms and coming to the investigation the important investigation you will be doing is a proctoscopy or anoscopy in this you will be inserting a small tube with a camera into your anal region and you will be visualizing the anal region with this you can differentiate between hemorrhoids whether there are primary hemorrhoids secondary hemorrhoids or it can be a anal fistula or anal sinus or anal abscess or anal tags so whatever the diseases uh, around the anus you have you will get the complete picture of those diseases with proctoscopy or anoscopy to understand this this is you need to understand a bit of anatomy around your anal region basically anal region is divided into three parts upper part middle part and lower part upper part is about uh, 15 millimeters in length middle part is also 15 millimeters in length and the lower part is 8 millimeters in length here you have to understand this lesion occurs around the middle part and lower part not in the upper part here what happens is this middle part or lower part is ectodermic in origin ectodermic in the origin means he, he this area is pain sensitive you have somatic nerves here which carry the pain sensation sensory nerve so any lesion you have in the middle region or lower region it is very painful because of that nerve innovation and also one more structure you have to understand here is anal splinter anal splinter is a round muscular structure around your anal region which will tighten your anus after you pass the stool and it will relax 
while you are passing the suit. There are two anal splinters, internal anal splinter and external anal splinter. Internal anal splinter is involuntary. So it is under the control of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system and external anal splinter is somatic nerve. So it is under your will. So basically contraction of anus is under two control, both voluntary and involuntary. And you have to understand this to understand this disease further. Coming to etiology, what are the major reasons for this disease? The important reason is constipation and straining during constipation. When you strain while constipation, this is going to cause some lesion, cracks in the mucosa. So they lead into a wound. And also removal of hemorrhoids. If you have any external hemorrhoids or internal hemorrhoids, when you remove these hemorrhoids, they don't heal properly. And this may also lead into stricture and stenosis. Stricture means the anal, internal anal splinter and external anal splinter will contract and they become hard. That is stricture. These are the main reasons for uh, anal fissure. Coming to the pathology, what exactly happens in your anal region when you have anal fissure? This can be divided into two major sections. First one is acute anal fissure and chronic anal fissure. Acute anal fissure is the uh, one when uh, which you see before six weeks up to six weeks when you have the lesion that is acute anal fissure here the lesion is red inflamed here the lesion is not so deep and it is not so wide so it is superficial but it's still painful after six weeks this acute anal fissure converts into chronic anal fissure here what happens is the wound becomes deeper and it becomes wider and also on the upper part of this lesion there is anal pili this is going to be hypertrophied and lower part of the lesion there will be hypertrophy of the skin this we call as sentinel pile when you have all these structures in your anoscopy or proctoscopy you consider this as chronic anal fissure this anal fissures can be again divided into primary anal fissures and secondary anal fissures in primary anal fissures you don't find any reason without reason you will get the anal fissures but in secondary anal fissure you can identify some causes identify some causes like constipation you have constipation after that you have developed anal fissure or you will have diarrhea even diarrhea can cause anal fissure and also irritable bowel disease if you have, if you have this syndrome irritable bowel disease then also you, you are prone to get anal fissures and also rectal cancers rectal cancers are also one of the major reason for anal fissures and also STDs sexually transmitted diseases if you have sexually transmitted diseases so it is also one of the reasons and also if you have anal intercourse this is also one of the reason for anal fissures here what exactly happens is you know that there will be two types of muscles internal anal splinter and external anal splinter which will be closing your anal region on opening your anal region after you defecate it will be closed what happens here is because of the lesion they become tight they become hard and this causes more pain or uh, severe sy symptoms and this causes non-healing of anal fissures. So there will be a spasm of anal splinter. This causes more severe symptoms and the prolongation of anal fissure uh, without uh, curing it. And this anal fissure is common in posterior region of anus rather than any other region. So uh, mostly it will be posterior region. Coming to the conventional treatment. Conventional treatment is a treatment which you take when you suspect you have any anal problem. You go to a doctor who is nearby your home or you go to a corporate hospital or you go to a gastroenterologist. That the treatment given by them is called conventional treatment. It is also called English treatment or Western form of treatment or allopathic form of treatment. What are the disadvantages you have when you take uh, this treatment for anal fissure? Basically, they don't have any medicine to cure anal fissure. They will be giving antibiotics or they will be giving painkillers. Mostly, they will be going for in uh, chronic anal fissure. They will in chronic anal fissure, they will be going for surgery. Other than this, they don't have any treatment. So, you know the painkillers, what are the damage done by the painkillers? It can damage your kidney, it can damage your liver or it can damage your nose. And also, they will use laxatives. Laxatives also have a lot of side effects. And also, coming to surgery, even after you undergo the surgery, there is high chance that this will be relapsing again and again. So, compared to homeopathic treatment, conventional treatment is not good in this case. If you have anal fissures, you have to directly contact a homeopathic doctor and get treated for better results. And coming to homeopathic treatment, how homeopathy can help you in this regard? Homeopathy has good medicines. So, depending on the pain 
so where is the pain how is the pain is the pain is there before you pass the stool or during passing the stool or after passing the stool is there any blood streak so what is the type of pain is it a gripping pain is it pinching pain is it a stabbing pain based on this you will have specific medicines when you get treated with these medicines so your anal fissure will be completely gone and also if you have recurring anal fissures you, you 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 have anal fissures and you have taken allopathic treatment or you went for surgery so you are seeing that these anal fissures are recurring again and again even in that case homeopathy has very good treatment you can prevent these anal fissures from occurring again and again basically homeopathy can cure anal fissure whether it is primary or secondary when it is a, a acute stage or chronic stage and also it can prevent your anal fissure from occurring again and again and also homeopathy treatment is very affordable compared to any other treatment so in anal fissure homeopathy you have the best treatment all this treatment in homeopathy is without any side effects in home when you take homeopathy treatment you will not have any side effects as you see in the case of painkillers or laxatives or surgery without any painkillers you can get treated for the anal fissures and also when you have any complications you you, you have gone for the surgery and you have landed into other complications like it got infected or any other uh, symptom uh, is left over from the surgery even that can be treated very well with homeopathy and coming to the precautions what precautions you have to take when you have anal fissure or when you want to avoid anal fissure the important thing you have to do is your diet should be rich of fiber you have to intake both soluble fiber and also insoluble fiber as well so you have to have healthy toiletry habits and you should not be straining during passing the motion and also your exercise is important your sleep is important and leading a stress free life is also very important to cure or prevent anal fissures also uh, other part of the diet take plenty of liquids so you can take uh, uh, water you can take buttermilk you can take uh, and also you need to take lot of vegetables whole vegetables which are rich in fiber so and also you can take whole pulses rather than taking the fruit juices you need to take whole fruit and also you can use chia seeds flax seeds whatever whatever uh, adds bulk to your stool or whatever increases the fiber to your diet you can take that and important precaution or important tip you have for uh, curing the anal fissure is sidge bath sidge bath is basically you will take a flat tub in that you will pour water you can pour water as you like you can if you want warm water you can use it if you want cold water you can use it whatever you like and you can put some pinch of salt into it and sit for 10 to 15 minutes so basically the purpose of uh, the sidge bath is not cleaning your anal region see your anal region you cannot clean your anal region because it is always in contact with microbes which is uh, coming from this tool so that is not the important aim of uh, sidge bath the important aim of sidge bath is to relax the anal splinter the anal splinter will be contracted or it going to spasm so you have to relax that anal splinter so that uh, the healing takes place that is the important uh, outcome you should be expecting from sidge bath and also one more tip you can have is while you are sitting or while you are going to sleep try to relax your anal region so that spasm is relaxed and you will get cured and coming to the prognosis what happens if you don't take the treatment or if you neglect it if you are in initial stages acute anal fissure may convert into chronic anal fissure which will take a lot of time to reduce and also in allopathic mode of treatment other than surgery you don't have any other choice for it if you still neglect what is going to happen is it will uh, hinder your daily activities you will always feel pain in your anal region and also this may get infected because of the infection you, you can have perianal abscess and from there it can lead into anal sinus and also anal fistula anal sinus and anal fistula are uh, blind tracts from anal region uh, or uh, blind tracts into the uh, mucosal region from abscess you have anal abscess where the pus is collected and they will drain into an anal region or outside which causes more harm and this is a very difficult to treat case so if you have suspect that you if you have anal fissure immediately you can contact us you can reach us in two ways once you, you can take online treatment um, the medicines will be shipped to your doorsteps and you can take the treatment or else you, you can drop into your clinic and take the treatment thank you